my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. I have a lot of fun things to talk about today from summer memories to what does it really mean when my books go out of print? We're gonna do that part at the end. We're gonna do some other fun stuff first. Yesterday was giraffe day and just had too many things to talk about. So we're gonna talk about giraffe day today because I know some of you have probably made quilts with giraffes on them. Here are two patterns that I found which are so cute. This first one is a PDF download, which is awesome. So you can just download it and start stitching. It's got giraffes and elephants and blocks. It's by Stacy Itsu, and she is an amazing designer. I love her. Uh, the next one I found was a little cross stitch. How sweet is that? It looks like the little toy pulleys that you did. You know, you had little toys. I thought they were just so darling. So if you need to make a giraffe, otherwise today, <laughs> we all need to make a giraffe, right? I don't think I had, do I have a giraffe in the um, critter pool? I don't know. Let me go check the list. There is a giraffe. The giraffe's face, beautiful, sweet little giraffe. Look at this. So this is linked at the critter page and my I love to make quilts. Oh, so sweet for giraffe day. <laughs> so the critters are getting to be darn cute. Okay, another thing, another thing. I had a few things in the mail. I just wanted to let Mary, Mary in where you at? Oklahoma. Mary in Oklahoma, I got your very sweet, sweet note. Thank you. Mwah. And from, what was it? Got this super cute card from me, Gaylene in Texas. Look at the card. And then she put a sticker in here. I have to show you the sticker. Super cute. You know, I love those stickers. <laughs> and she made me a mug rug. Oh, a mug rug with a mug on it. So cute. I love it. I do use these. So she, you asked in the, the little note, the sweet note that, you know, you hadn't seen mug rugs. I occasionally show them. I do have them because I use them and, you know, they're just stuck under the thing. So, <laughs> but I love it. Thank you so much. Mwah. Very sweet. You all are very, very sweet. Okay. Uh, the, let's see, what do we have? Let's talk about the <laughs> <laughs> I lost my train of thought there. So sweet, the sweet memories from, oh goodness, everything's on the other, here it is. It was actually right in front of me, but it was open, so I didn't see it. Okay, we are working on, we, the world we, I am working on this one, the summer picnic. So there is the summer picnic, and I am making it, that this one is uh, four by four, see the diagram four by four, and I'm going to make mine three by four because that seems to be what I'm going to be capable of. Now, I did a, another block, which made me very excited because I've discovered what I need to do in order to get, get these sort of repetitive. These are, these are more repetitive blocks for me. They're the same block. I am using different fabrics, but they're the same block. And I tend to stall a bit on repetitive blocks. Um, as you see, that's why I do a lot of samplers because I just find it interesting to do different blocks. Okay, that said, <laughs> I am looking sort of at my workflow with this and because I love it and I love making them, but I need to sort of make it work for my brain, make work for my brain. So what I decided is I need to sort of cut everything for just one block. This is one block, not a basket. There's four baskets make one block. So I need to cut for this and then lay it out on the board and then maybe sew it that night. It might take two nights to sew it, which is fine. And so that means that I, I have the fabric pulled and that will take, you know, how many more do I need? I need four more for down here, four, five, six. So I need six more, right? Is that right? No, no, I need seven. I need seven more. Yeah, because it's six and six. So the top half is six. So I need seven more blocks. If I were to take me, if I work on three days, so that's like 21 days. So like somewhere next month, I would, you know, late next month, three weeks, you know, or so if I don't get it all the time. This is the way my brain works. I need to know. And if you want to finish things on a certain timetable, that's what you have to do. Figure out how long it takes you to make a unit. How many units do you need? Okay, three days times seven units. That's how many days I need, I need 21 days to get um, 
to get this done, to get all the blocks done. And I added adding sashing as I'm going, which also means I have to make another decision on this. I can't just sort of willy nilly go through it if I'm going to do placement now, if I'm going to sew blocks in place. That means I'm looking at the fabric color and I'm looking at the block style. So there's two things because this quilt has multiple block styles. So on like this block, well, you can see here, so, uh, whoops, whoop. So off, so, so on, on the, um, I'll just show you two of them so you get an idea, but you can look in your book. Uh, this one has all, all the triangles out here are the same color, but then there's variations where there's blue here, then these are flipped and rotated a different way, like on this one. Do you see that R rotated a different way? And so there's, there's all different ones. That means as I'm doing this, I already have two of the same uh, here. These two the same. That means I want to repeat that style. So the next block I'm going to do is the style where they're all the same color. And, you know, and that might seem odd or trivial, but what happens is if you put blocks up there that create a pattern, uh, your eye is going to find those patterns and see them. So even though you'll be like, oh, I don't care if I've got like a whole bunch. Oh, that's really crooked. <laughs> Sorry, really crooked. I can't stand that. Um, so even if you are like, well, I don't care that all the same kind are all in a row there and everything else is, is mixed up. Um, your, your eye is still going to go there. Maybe it doesn't bother you, but it does me. So I can't, I have to balance it out. So that means I have to look at fabrics. Do I want a, like a really light? Do I want a dark? And then which style basket? So those are kind of the things that I'm looking at right now. So like I have a light blue here. I'm going to pull in a lighter color and I have them pulled. Oh, there we go. So I've already pulled the fabric and I pressed it to cut it. So I've got, this is the light blue that I'm going to use. Is that the front? No, that's the back. <laughs> okay, there's the front. So I'm going to use this light blue here because I want to repeat that light blue. And then there's two more rows. And so I will probably try to get a light blue down in each one and then get this sort of colonial kind of blue and then the summer blue. So I'm, I have enough of those different styles to do that. And then I decide I'm not going to repeat anything. At one point I thought, oh, I repeat, repeat some. And I'm like, nah, I have enough fabric. I cannot re I can, I can go without repeating. So this is going to have this one, the red stripe, and I didn't grab the pink one, but there's a different, there's a different pink one over there. And then my background here on the next one will be this fabric. So I'm going to cut all those and then tonight I sew often between 9 and 10 30 at night um, then sometimes I sew during the day if I'm sewing something like for the video but that's what I'll do is I'm gonna work on getting these over the next few um, you know over the next three weeks four weeks because I'll have to work on other things too so that means I won't work on it exclusively but if I just cut one night sew half of them another night half of them another night if I or you know however it works anyway that is a plan and so if you are someone who um, is looking for a method and plan of how you get your projects done or how you are able to accomplish a deadline. Hopefully that gives you a little insight into how I approach them. <laughs> it's not perfect. It's not perfect, but it gives me a great, great focus. I know if I had to do these, you know, had to meet a deadline, you know, you'd have to up your time schedule. Maybe if your deadline is sooner than three weeks, you know, get them done faster. Okay, as the, <laughs> as the unofficial ambassador for the Virginia Quilt Museum, uh, today is we, I have down to talk about museum things, and so I thought I would get, take this opportunity uh, to, uh, to tell you about uh, some other things that are going on at the museum that you are probably going to be interested in. So let's take a look. So while I tell you some things about the Virginia Quilt Museum, <laughs> I just thought I'd put Wendy's Harrisonburg quilt up behind me because I'm still the caretaker of this. I have not gotten that back down to her yet. So uh, down, I say down because she lives just south of me. <laughs> uh, so anyway, while we're talking, this is the Harrisonburg quilt. We, if you are new to my channel, new to what we're doing here, uh, we've been running a sew along with a um, 
quilt from the Virginia Quilt Museum with my friend Wendy Shepard. Wendy Shepard drafted the pattern from the uh, original quilt that's in the museum, which is designed by Ellen Rebecca Spitzer and made, made by Ellen Rebecca Spitzer. And so we had been sewing along. We started on Valentine's Day of this year. Uh, and there's a few things about this sew along that are extra special. One is that we're raising money for the Virginia Quilt Museum uh, with the funds from the pattern sales. <clears throat> and we have raised over $25,000. Yes, you guys are awesome. Uh, we also have some other things going on. You can enter your quilt into the virtual quilt show and it can just be a top. You can just have the top and it can be any size. You don't have to, um, you know, finish it. You don't have to do this exact size. If you didn't put the border on, you did less blocks. You only made a table runner or a pillow. All of those can go in the virtual quilt show. So you want to go to the Virginia Quilt Museum's website. I've got a link below and you can uh, enter there. We have an event on September 16th of this month, uh, this year rather, <laughs> September 16th, uh, in a few months, where Wendy and I, we're going to have Wendy's quilt, my quilt, which is at the spa right now, being quilted. Uh, we will also have the original um, Rebecca Spitzer quilt there. So you'll be able to see all three quilts in person and chat with Wendy and I that afternoon. We will be there for the afternoon. Uh, Okay, then there will be in 2024 an actual exhibit. So a few of you will be able to exhibit your quilts at the museum. You'll have to enter them in uh, to be reviewed and then we'll select, we have to look at sizes. They have to be finished, of course, to be exhibited. Um, but then there will be an exhibit at the museum in 2024 of, we're hoping maybe a dozen quilts besides Wendy's Mine and the Antique. But it really depends on space. This is a small museum, it's in a Civil War home, so there's only so much space. Okay, some other things that are fun going on to, at the museum is <laughs> there is a mini quilt challenge. How fun is that? You don't have to be even local to do this, but you can make a mini quilt, enter it in the challenge, and the theme is your school. It's a school theme, so you go read about it. Um, so you're going to be doing something with your school logo or something like that, and then you will enter it. Um, and if it's selected, it will be exhibited in the museum. You could have one of your quilts in a museum exhibit. This is what's so awesome about the Virginia Quilt Museum. They do a lot of these little challenges where the quilts are not super big. That way a lot of people can be exhibited and you can have your quilt on display. They're usually like a three month exhibit uh, at the museum. It's just fabulous. So, so cool. The other thing the museum does is a lot of in-person events. Now one of them, I just picked one, you can go to the event page and see all the different things going on, like Wendy and I being there is one of their in-person events, but they are having a garden party. So fun. So the garden party, it will have some catered snacks and it's a fundraiser, of course. So everything that you don't, you, the money you donate to be there. And I believe it has a theme. So there's like a dress up portion if you want to get sort of dressed up to do this. Um, but what a fun outing. Go with a friend, um, your mom, a sister, uh, your girlfriends, uh, support the museum, have a fun little outing. The town of Harrisonburg is darling. There are other little shops uh, and it's just super cool. Cool. So it's a garden party. So you want to um, sign up for that and see what other events there are. Okay, there is our uh, little review. So I want to be sure you get in on the things going on at the museum. All right, let's talk about books. Oh, before we do books. <laughs> <laughs> the Gnome family has stopped in to do their laundry, their laundry, and to see the new Aunt Pat. So I'm going to put her up here too. There they are. <laughs> Reunited, reunited with Aunt Pat. <laughs> so Kathy and our ambassador Marilyn, they were last visiting there. Now they have, they actually have three more stops and then we'll do a wrap up of their world tour, which will be about a year from when they first left here. And so I am going to leave them up there while we're talking because they're just so darn cute. <laughs> And the laundry's in, you know, going in the machine. So what are they going to do? This also lets me keep track of Baby Bob and Little Lucy because they get into things. All right, books. What happens when a book goes out of print? I just wanted to talk about this because my publisher, Martingale, closed, which means 
it's a different thing when a company closes versus just a book just kind of generally goes out of print they're not going to print any more of them but it's but it's all sort of encompassing and about the same thing uh, so first i want you to think back about when there was no internet most of you can remember that uh, even if you were still maybe a kid um, you could get a book at the library you could buy a book at the store that was it you know borrow the book from a friend whatever it was a hard cover book you only had this you didn't have uh, re reading the books online you weren't reading p printing pdfs and digital books uh, you didn't have a kindle uh, any of that stuff you just had physical books so think back because whatever happened when you just have physical books is still the same as now the the when they go out of print when they go out of print it's no different now than it was then uh, so I want to just to just let you know because there are some misconceptions and I want to be sure you understand because I have a lot of out of print things so when a book goes out of print first of all these two will not these are my two books that are still be in print where you can get a physical copy like this that is brand new never owned by anybody else when you buy a brand new book like this I do get a royalty so I get a percentage of this as income if you go on the aftermarket and you purchase my book from Amazon or a reseller or you find it at a yard sale I get zero I get zero money off of that sale which is logical it's all I've already been uh, compensated but um, I think sometimes some of you think like you will I will get more money unless you buy it on Amazon with my link then I get a few pennies commission and literally it is pennies and make it five or ten cents something like that um, so you know unless you're using my affiliate link at Amazon any other place you buy my book physical book as a reseller uh, at a reseller's yard sale whatever I don't get any compensation just because people think that I do they've told me and it's like no no I don't just when you buy the physical first copies when you buy the real ones okay I have had a lot of books go out of print um, you know even when the online was very new I had books going out of print like this was my first book printed uh, and it went you know sold 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 and then they just decided it was you know they weren't going to print any more of them so it was done this was kind of my second book never was a PDF never available as a download um, even though the internet existed it just that company didn't do that this is by McCall's magazine so those are the things that that happen and why things go out now if you go on to um, leisure arts website which was my first publisher you know and they i did you know tons of books with leisure arts some of these are still pdf downloads for a digital so you can do that and if you use my link then i will get compensated for those digital books uh, now what happens with a company that closes like martingale closed the website is gone uh, so there are no pdf versions of any of my books available um, there used to be but that's all gone uh, so what happens when you want to buy you want something from a book that's out of print okay let's talk about this one because it is very obviously never been a PDF so we can deal with you know thinking about that so you can only buy a hard copy that would be it now because you own let's say you own one of these books um, you um, can sell the book and you can loan the book you cannot make copies of it you also cannot publish it just because you bought one copy for 10 bucks doesn't give you the publishing rights to my designs so that means you can't go and publish my book as a PDF just because you own it you don't own the rights to it I own the rights to it I could do that but not you and people seem to have a misconception they think well I could just make copies of this and give it out well no you're that's not your it's not your property you just own the book you can loan your book and you could sell your book so that's how it works so I wanted to be sure that it's really clear um, because the Martingale books since they're gone they're gone there's no PDFs ever going to be available of them again uh, and anybody that already owns a PDF that is not yours to do anything you like with it you can just keep it for yourself um, and I appreciate all of the sales over all of these years of my 30 books I've written 30 books with three different publishers 
And now my fourth publisher is C&T, who picked up both of these books and will be, they'll be coming out under the C&T label. Uh, one will be, I think the end of July will be this one. And then the next month, I think in August will be this one, if all goes as planned. All right, my friend. So if you're making baskets with me and you needed a plan, hopefully maybe that gave you an idea of how I'm gonna work through mine. And I hope you're enjoying the gnomes. We still have a few more stops. We'll probably be done by the end of September with their tour and do a massive re recap of it. That'll be so much fun. And the Harrisonburg or any of the other Virginia Quilt Museum events. I hope you get in on them. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.